Are you prepared for the worst part of full-time RV living? We share our biggest challenge next. It definitely makes me want to just stop traveling. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And we are being challenged right now. This is Mango. A couple of people have asked us that know that we've been going through some, some challenges those last couple of weeks. They've said, you should make a video about this. And part of me doesn't want to, but I know that it could help you, particularly if you're considering doing full-time RV life or even going on an extended trip in your RV. There's definitely, and what we're facing is a, the worst part of RV life, and that is health challenges. Yeah, I mean, it applies to us as well as to Mango, but right now we're facing an issue with Mango. It has driven the, the point home really forcefully for us. So we're going to tell his story and also share some tips for you that may help you if you're planning even a long trip. You have to consider what happens if you're out away from your normal vet or your normal doctor if it's one of you what do you do in a medical emergency so what's going on with mango mango by the way is a 14 year old shiba inu i've had him since april 2007 and he's been on the road with us almost three years and he's not really liking life right now we noticed a year and a half ago he started limping and then he was having a hard time walking and then it was clear that he was in pain he has gone to five different vets in that time and four of the vets have been really good. During the different vet visits, we learned that he has arthritis in his back. He'd been prescribed anti-inflammatories and pain pills and then it came to a head, I guess about 10 days ago. You wanna talk about what happened 10 days ago? Well, yeah, I mean, he just got to the point where he couldn't stand up, I mean, at all. Even if I lifted him up um, to put him on his feet, um, he would go he would fall right back down again and he was clearly in severe yeah. pain yeah and i mean he was snapping at us if you touched um his hindquarters um or even anywhere near him if you are going to be on the road with your pet you should first of all make sure that all the shots are up to date so you don't have to get the shots on the road particularly rabies and bordetella Ask your home vet to digitize all the files and send them to you in an email. That will make it so much easier when you're going to a new vet. Keep track of the records and what I was doing was after he went to a vet, I was having those records sent back to my home vet so that at least they're all in one place or have them send them to you so that you at least have everything together. To that point, I mean, every time you see a new vet, it's, you're starting from zero. They don't have any history on him. The good part of that is that they do see Mango with fresh eyes, so they may come from a different point of view, which can really be helpful. Don't be isolated. If you're faced with a health challenge, either for you or for your pet, reach out. I reached out to friends and learned of some treatments that I had never even thought of. I learned that there's cold laser treatments. It's like a healing laser. It's mm -hmm. good for people too. Mm -hmm. And I also learned about chiropractic care, which I never would have thought. I'd never heard of such thing for dogs. And it worked wonders. So what happened on Tuesday night, I realized he was suffering so bad he needed to go to a vet. Well, I didn't know where the 24-hour emergency vets were because, of course, we're traveling. We, we don't know everything about the area. We were out in the country. The nearest big city was Terre Haute, and there were no 24-hour vets in the city at all. So the nearest 24-hour vet would have been Indianapolis, which was about 90 miles away. But the best advice we got here on Tuesday night when we realized we needed to see a vet, all the vets were closed, and of course we weren't patients, was our friend Karen. She said, just call a vet, they'll have a nighttime phone number to call in emergencies. So we called and we found there was an emergency vet. They would come in, it wasn't 24 hours, they would come in by appointment to see him, and they were about 40 minutes up the road. So Karen and I went up there. We actually went up there after 10 o'clock at night at that point. Didn't get home till after midnight. Yeah. And they gave him such loving care. He got a pain shot, a steroid, a muscle relaxer, and they did the cold laser wand, which did, did wonders. And then the next day I brought him back and he got a chiropractic treatment. In case you're wondering, this is the cold laser. It puts out um, a red laser beam. You apply it to the area that's affected 
You don't do it through clothing. And you wear protective I eyewear. Put them on. I think he looks really good with these on. The Terminator look. Yeah. So I'm going to turn away and you turn it on so they can see. So there's, there's the light. If you're traveling with a pet, particularly an older pet, this is something to prepare yourself for. So in addition to what's happening in your life as far as traveling and moving and all that, there's this. And it definitely makes me want to just stop traveling and just focus on his care. So, and this does apply to people too. So what happens if one of you gets sick and you need continuing care? Do we just park it and, and you know, wait for that, you know, wait for the condition to, to get better or get worse, uh, you know. I think it depends on what it is. You know, if you've got a broken ankle or something like that, that's, you know, not a mystery and has a pretty straightforward cure, you could probably keep traveling as long as you could make accommodations for that. But if you have something that needs a watchful eye and, you know, with Mango, of course, he can't talk. So we don't know exactly if it's just the, the arthritis or if there's something else. Yeah. You know, one of us gets COVID, you know, what happens? We actually know people who are full-time RVers who have had or are currently being treated for COVID. If I had to go into the hospital or you, I mean, we'd be, we would not be going anywhere. Right, or the big C, you know. Oh yeah, cancer, yeah, sure. If you need recurring care, or chemotherapy or something, you're, you're gonna be in one place, you're not, you're not moving. I do get my checkups, and for you guys out there, make sure you're getting your prostate exams annually. And a colonoscopy. And a colonoscopy. You know, yeah. breast exam, bone yeah. density, all those things still need to happen when you're on the road. And I think a good answer for that is to return to your hometown once a year so you can get all that done. Do you have it in your budget? to have an exit plan if you're not gonna travel anymore, if, if a health crisis occurs and you need to move into an apartment close to a hospital or that kind of thing, do you have it in your budget to stop traveling? Do you have it in your budget if you need to stay at a campground for a longer time versus traveling? And I'm right. speaking to people like, you know, we're in Thousand Trails and if we choose to, we can stay in the membership and not pay for campgrounds, but if we have to stay longer than three weeks, then we have to start paying. Then we start paying. If you're not in this lifestyle and you're considering it, do you need a plan? But don't let this keep you home either. Right. Yeah. You know, if you're feeling fine and you don't have any health issues, by gosh, don't just sit around and go, well, you know, in case I have something, I should stay home. Yeah. Absolutely, you know, get out there. You don't know how long you'll be able to get out and enjoy this life, but if it calls you, do it. Sorry for this downer video, but you know, we're just trying to keep it real out here. We have never been accused of sugarcoating anything <laughs> out here in RV life, and, and no. we still love it. And actually, this makes us appreciate every day because every day is so precious. You it never really know is. which one is your last. Yeah, it really is. Life is short and, and uh, just make the best of it. Live your life. Well, let us know any tips you have for taking care of a dog with arthritis or any health care on the road tips. Yeah, we'd love to hear what you have to say and uh, put it in the comments.